guys, welcome to the Druid Circle, and today, oh, I really hope this is the cut that is able to be uploaded, because I have tried this way too many times. Uh, today, we are going to be ranking the D&D classes and races, so let's just get into it, because I'm really tired of having to record the same video multiple times. Let's just, alright, so... The, uh, so, you know, we're going in alphabetical order. Irakakra is A tier. It can fly, but there, that's, you know, pretty much it. Azamar is also an A tier. It's really good. It's just, you know, like, it's not like, get, like, it's, like, it, the uh, resistance to, um, uh, necrotic and radiance is good. I, and the light, and then everything else is kind of mediocre. Um, Bugbear is also a tier because bias and long arms. Centaur, it's, it's C tier. Oh no, that's it's C tier. You know, it's all right, but like the fact that it's able to carry more. It can, and its speed, and the fact that you're able to have another per person ride on your back, it's pretty much all that's memorable, that's pretty much, like, all the good stuff about it. Changeling is S tier, because the fact you can just turn into other people is just really overpowered. Um, Dragonborn is an A tier. Um, I'm trying to remember if I said, hey, hey, hey guys, welcome to the Druid Circle, or hey guys, swag slog beer. It's fine. I mentioned that this is Druid Circle. It should be fine. And it's obvious that it's Druid Circle. Because you can just check my channel. Anyways. Um. You know. Dragon is there. Uh. An A tier. Because. You know. It's. It. Uh. The fact that the gem dragonborn can fly. And the. Uh. Um. What's it called? The. Uh. The. The, the normal dragonborns. Like the. Uh, have the. Uh. Um the uh, draconic ancestry i think it's called where like they are resistant to different types of damage dwarf is in c tier it's fairly good but like not like not as good as the stuff i'm gonna put in b tier same same with elf feral tiefling is can just do everything eric Hodger can fly um but better if i if i'm remembering feral tiefling correctly if Feral Tiefling is the Tiefling with wings, then just, hmm. Uh, Furbolg, also S tier. The fact that you can just communicate with plat plants and then also have advantage and charisma stuff when doing that is really good. And it also has other stuff that is also really good. I just, none, none of it's coming to mind. But, oh, right, right, right. It can cast Disguise that Self and Detect Magic, which are pretty, which are really good spells. Uh, Fire Genasi is B tier. You know, pretty good. Way better than Elf, uh, Dwarf and Elf, but, you know. Oh, shoot, I forgot to add a... You know, since nothing is really, uh, F tier, we're just gonna go with... We're gonna have NF be not familiar, because there are... Th there are just... There are a couple of, um... These... There, well, let me phrase that. There is literally one race... That I have no knowledge of and can't really get knowledge because the website won't let me have access to it for whatever reason. I'll just put it there now. It's the... No, it's not the Veldekin. It's... It's the Kalishar. Yeah, it's the Kalishar. I meant Kalishar, sorry. Um, Gif. Gif is C tier. You know what? I'll add a. I'll go below. I'll just. F. There are just. Just so it's like all. Alright. Oh, yeah, get. It's, you know, alright. Nothing too notable about it, I don't think. Uh, Gnome, again. Oh, sorry, dropped my Apple Pen. Um, putting that there. It's alright. 
Goblin is gonna go in B tier. Not as good as Bugbear, because it doesn't have the long arms or powerful build. It, I, but it does also have Sneak Attack, which Bugbear also has, which I forgot to mention, which is another reason why it's an A tier. It just has Rogue stuff for free. Um, but it has proficiency in stealth, and I also think it has Sneak Attack, which is why it's going in B. Goliath has the um, stuff that gives it either 1d12 temporary hit points or like 1d12 hit points. Or can heal 1d12 hit points. Either way, it's going in B tier. Half Elf is going in C tier for the same reasons as Elf and Dwarf. And a Half Orc going in B tier because of the ability it can just survive for a little bit after zero hit points. Or at zero hit points. Is, um, Halfling is going in B tier. Everything else... Ah, uh, hold a minute. Oh, not... Uh, there. Sorry. Um. I want to let me go up. Oh my god, it's annoying. Alright, so. Uh, alright, come on. Yeah, there. Oh, alright, so it's going in B tier because the Lucky Feet is really good, but and everything else it isn't that, not that notable. Uh, Hobgoblin is going in D tier because if you, like, the only reason you'd really play Hobgoblin is for the plus five for like the roll which is pretty good which is why it's on an e tier um but it's not outstanding and the only other thing it has is like the only notable thing it has is long is like proficiency in a weapon like uh, martial weapons that if you would need that for the character you're trying to build chances are you are either a min maxer which no one likes or you um or you already have that proficiency because you're playing a fighter or a barbarian or anything else that has that or paladin so d tier because uh like it's only saving grace is um is the plus five at maximum plus well but let me phrase it you have to roll to see if you can actually add a bonus to your attack and then if you succeed it's a maximum of plus five um, human is going in S tier, because either you get a feat, if you do variant human, or you get plus one in every stat, which you probably already know why plus one in every stat is overpowered, um, if you don't want to shoot, like, most characters have a max, oh, I forgot, half elf has a plus two and a plus one, so it's actually gonna get, or two, plus, one plus two and two plus ones, which is gonna be bumped up a bit, cause it's, like, that's really good, having more than just a plus two and a plus one because it means you're able to do more things with your character concept wise um so like or the or the main or honestly the main reason why it's an s tier and not just a tier is because of the fact that if you pick uh variant human and for your feet do i think it's shadow touch and then i think it's in, in intelligence based um you can uh get you you can get uh the spell invisibility and you can use it at level one and i don't know if it has cooldown but even if it does have a cooldown that's over that's insanely overpowered like like that breaks the game like uh, I don't know if I mentioned, like, that. I, I don't think I'm quite at the point where I ban it. Um, like, I am at the point, at, like, I don't think changelings would be allowed in my campaign. Or the Furbolg. You know, you know what, the Furbolg would be allowed because no one will actually play it. And if they want to play it, I want to support that because the, the Furbolg is actually really cool. I'm sure that keeps going blank. But st still, really overpowered. Tenku... E tier because it's really annoying because if you want to have one-on-one -on -one role play, you need to have already have heard in your character's lifetime the stuff that you want your character to say, or just have someone there, or just like, like it can be good for memorize or like if you hear a password for something you can just say that password and then get into a fault, but like it, you know, not it's. Eh. Uh, uh, Kobold is going in A tier 
because they have pack tactics, they have some sort of cry thing which gives them like advantage or push things away. I don't know what exactly it does, but I remember it being pretty good. Then also something else that, oh, it can also do a type of spell and poison spray is one of those spells, which to my knowledge is the only 1d12 cantrip. Granted, it's poison and a lot of things have poison resistance or immunity, but still. Uh, Lizard Folk uh, goes in B tier. You know, it's pretty good. Like, uh, the bonus to AC, and then also the ability to, um, to have, uh, um, you know, you know, you can swim, and there's a couple other things, not, maybe not a couple, but there's one or two other things that were really cool that I can't remember about it, and these bites, and maybe something else, I don't know. Uh, the Luxagon is, Lux, Luxadon is going in S tier, because of the trunk, it can, it can hold an extra object. I don't know if it can wield weapons, but, like, still, being able to just hold an extra object, like, the rest of your party is, like, you know, has to choose between either holding a shield or a weapon or a torch in a dark cave. You can just hold the torch in your trunk and then walk and then walk around with your weapon, shield in one arm and weapon in the other hand. It's Minotaur. Putting it, I'm putting in C tier. Like no C or B tier. It, like if it, I'm gonna go like very low B tier, uh, because like. Like, it's good, but, like, most of its traits are just, you have horns, and pretty much it. Orc, if I remember correctly, mostly only has, like, stuff based around it being strong. I could be wrong. And, and, and if in case it has that thing that half orc has, I'm also going to put it in, nah, 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 I'm going to put it in C tier, if my memory's correct. Uh, Shifter also goes in C tier. No, Shifter goes in B tier because you can make some really good builds with that. Now, if you played Simic Hybrid, you already know why it goes in S tier. Tabaxi goes in B tier. You know, it's really good. Not not like overpowered and definitely not break the game levels, but still, Tiefling goes in C tier because hands are right. Portal goes in A tier because the fact you can't have armor lower than I think it's 16 is really good. Triton goes in C tier. So does Fel Feldekin. Uh, Triton because it's just an amphibious human. That's pretty much it. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. Might have a couple other things that would bump it up a bit, but like it's still not. Feldekin because it's really... So you either have Advant uh, advantage on intelligence or wisdom or charisma saving throws or you have advantage in all three can't remember what it is but either way that's pretty good and the extra proficiency isn't bad but you know otherwise it's kind of uh warforge not being able to, or not be not having the need to eat sleep or you know drink or you know like breathe oxygen is pretty good I think it also would mean you'd be immune to poison spray, because it's a poison spray, not a poison punch, or what, or a poison stab, or just slapping up some. And then, you know, Yanti, poison resistance is pretty good, a lot of spells are poison based, so it goes in C tier. And now, we are gonna list the D&D &D classes, Artificer. That's not doing what I what I thought it would, so let me Art here. Great, I misclicked. Art here. Artificer, artificer, whatever. Oh my gosh. Placer. There. Alright, so starting off, 
Barbarian. Um, that goes in A tier. Really good tank. Rage is amazing. Unarmored bonus. It's one downside is that, like... If, you know, one guy's over here and your and your Barbarian guy chases him over here and he teleports or just runs over here faster than your Barbarian can, your Barbarian has to just kind of boom, boom and guys kind of, like, can't do anything, really, except for throw his axe and hope it does something. But you're really good other than that one flaw. Bard, B tier, really good. Uh, B tier, pretty good. Healer, inspo... I forgot about Inspiration. That goes in A tier. Inspiration is really good. Uh, Cleric is a poor man's Druid, and we'll explain why Druid is in S tier right now. Uh, Druid can heal, has somewhat good um, weapon proficiencies. It has access to scimitars, which are pretty good, and wooden shields, which are like pretty good armor, because like, it just gives you plus two to your... Um, to your uh, weapons, or your, not what, AC, sorry, I, I was thinking about something else, sorry. Um, it's, um, you know, pretty good. Uh, you know, it, but, but where it really shines is the fact that you can turn into animals, and if you have, like, really combat-heavy animals, when that animal dies, you just turn back into a human, and then when you have the hit points that you had, before you would turn into an animal meaning if you have a lot of hit points because you're also a barbarian that just makes it insanely good and or if you're a fighter which we'll get to now then that goes in s tier because you also would get armors and weapons that the barbarian can't and the reason i'm putting fighter in s tier probably gonna get a lot of flack for it because it's not like no one really seems to like fighter everyone says it's basic however i feel like this doesn't sound stupid. That's where it shines. Let me explain. So, it can pretty much multi-class with every, anything and still be really solid and a good, like, a good class structure because it kind of just merges with everything so well. Like, and also, as a standalone thing with Eldritch Knight, it's really good. Uh, Monk goes into B tier. Um, if you know how to use it, it's, it, you can do really cool things. Like, I have this character that in one turn, uh, because he can use a key to dash as a bonus action, he can use his action to dash, and he also has nimble, squat nimbleness and mobile. He can move at 165 feet around, which is really good. And, you know, unarmored strikes, pretty good, you know, he and a couple other things. I'm not super familiar with the monk, but I have seen it be played and it looks pretty fun to play. Uh, Paladin goes in A tier. It's not, it can't really be as put, it can't really go as well with other uh, D&D classes, but other, you know, otherwise it works really well. It, you know, works pretty well as a standalone. You also mix it with a couple other things. You have a good class. No. Um. My dog's coming down the stairs. Ranger, A tier. That's pretty unpopular opinion. Let me explain. Uh, Ranger isn't as good as Fighter, but it has uh, the same hit points. A good chunk of their same proficiencies. Fairly good armor proficiencies. Um, they can, they also, um. They also have the Marking Beast thing. The, uh, ter the terrain, uh, the the uh, expert in certain terrains, um, don't know what, I don't know what that's called off the top of my head, um, but the, the, I, my favorite thing about the ranger is Wraith Warden, and because I like having, I, I'm actually, uh, um, uh, Portal Master, which I've talked, sorry, there's a fly right on my screen, sorry, um, I've talked about, uh, um, Portal Master, my druid uh, ranger character, on my YouTube, on you know this YouTube channel, I think, if, depending on that video is uploaded yet by the time this one is, um, then you know, yeah, like I played a ranger type character before. I really like it. I didn't use any of the bow stuff or like most of the 
favorite enemy stuff yet. But, you know, eventually. Rogue also probably goes in A tier. You know, a B tier, honestly. It works, it, like, merges well with other classes, but not as well as Spider. Can't heal, can't really cast spells. It can if you do Arcane Trickster, but its spell casting is limited. Um, it's attack, it doesn't have he very good health. Uh, however, where it does shine is being stealthy, which is a fairly big portion of D&D, relatively speaking. But not big enough to the point where, like, your character, like, make or, that makes or breaks your character, whether or not you can sell. The same way it would for proficiency, which, mm. uh, and then sneak attack and just doing a lot of damage at once, which is where it pairs well with, um, stealth, like, the ability to hide, because you can do big damage and then stealth again. However... If you if you are unable to stealth again, and you can't escape your enemy, you're kind of screwed. If you're like it, it's situational, is what I'm trying to say. It's really good in certain situations, but not very well in others. Like in a ring, like in a cage battle, it not it kind of sucks. In a dark forest battle, it's really good. Now. I feel like Warlock is in C tier. It would probably be B or A. Or B, A, or B. No, that's not. It would probably be in tier A and tier B. If it didn't have limited spell slots and also didn't have, like, 1d6 health. Which is, like... Like, Eldritch Blast is amazing. And that's why it's high B, uh, C tier, not medium C tier. And, like, you can do things, Veldred's Blast, you can, you know, communicate with animals at will, I think, if you select certain things. It's pretty good. High C tier. Uh, Wizard is probably also high C tier. Um, it's probably the most basic spellcasting class, which, you know, why most people are able... It's either Wizard or Sorcerer that's the most easy to get to. But, you know, Wizard is pretty good for, like, starters and beginners it's not very complex um it's kind of a good class to multi-class with because it's the most versatile spell casting class to mix with sorcerer however is a mediocre um spell casting thing like multi-classing thing sorry however it shines in most other areas and it's also a bit complex enough for beginners but, like, I still, I feel like Sorcerer is the best purely spell class, because it, you know, it does the, uh, dragon ancestry thing where it has, like, a buff and AC and, like, as can do certain fires. I don't know what it's called. I'll have to Google it. But, like, again, it's mostly biased why so Sorcerer is in B tier, but I honestly think Sorcerer works well because of its meta magic. Because, like, how uh, Warlock only has the invocations that only work with uh, Eldritch Blast. Sorcerer's um, st uh, things um, in uh, metamagic can work with any of the spells. Um, and because it's getting fairly late my time, I don't think I'm going to make another video. And instead, I'll just see if I can record a video tomorrow. Um... But that, my, my time, that has been the end of this uh, five video start of this channel. That is the end of this video, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!